This is Marine One, the presidential helicopter. Currently, it's flying into Washington, D.C. As it pulls up to a stop in front of the White House, you'd probably expect it to land on a pristine, high-tech helipad, right? Wrong. It actually just lands right on the South Lawn. Yep, right on the grass. But why? It's a head-scratcher, but the explanation is a bit more layered than you'd think. The tradition of landing on the South Lawn began in 1957, when President Dwight Eisenhower first rode in a helicopter. Rather than necessity, the idea of landing a presidential helicopter on the South Lawn of the White House was born out of a need for speed. Eisenhower needed a quick way to get to his summer home in Pennsylvania, and traveling by helicopter was faster than driving. The first helicopter to touch down on the White House grounds was a Bell H-13J, a tiny, lightweight craft, nothing like the current presidential helicopter, the Sikorsky VH-3D Sea King, or also known as Marine One as soon as the president is on board. But it wasn't just a one-off solution. Little did they know, that decision would set a precedent that would change presidential travel for good. And thus, a tradition was born. But why has it continued as the presidential helicopters have gotten heavier, despite obvious complications? After all, grass isn't exactly the best choice for an aircraft this large. The South Lawn spreads 18 acres and serves as the primary outdoor space for presidential activities. With gentle rolling slopes that provide a backdrop like that out of an antique painting, this is where ceremonial events such as presidential press briefings and the annual Easter egg roll take place. And this is the first reason why they keep the grass. They just don't want to destroy the nice view. But still, the location provides more than enough space for Marine One to maneuver and land safely and is less than five minutes from the Oval Office, making it convenient for the president to move between the White House and the helicopter quickly. Another reason for the continued tradition is Washington, D.C.'s Flight Restricted Zone, or FRZ. This is one of the most highly controlled airspaces in the world, meaning that landing a helicopter anywhere other than the South Lawn, like the Ellipse or the Lafayette Square, which are too public or too small for a helicopter of Marine One size, would be quite challenging, as the FRZ is not only heavily monitored but equally restricted. Interestingly, the South Lawn landings have received increased levels of attention. And according to a recent report by Axios, this increase in scrutiny has caused the current president, Joe Biden, to walk with aides to divert attention from his gate, changing his regular routine for going to and from the helicopter alone. Regardless of its growing popularity, the South Lawn remains the most logical landing spot. But as we'll soon see, what started as a simple solution, over time became more complex, as landing on grass isn't without its complications, especially considering the size and weight of today's Marine One. No longer the small helicopter of Eisenhower's era, Marine One is now a heavy aircraft that weighs nearly 19,000 pounds fully loaded. To put it into perspective, that's about the same as four fully loaded SUVs. And what happens when a helicopter with only three wheels that heavy lands on soft grass? You guessed it, problems. The first you need to understand is that this monster is so heavy because it's equipped with the latest tech from advanced communication systems to defense countermeasures. With such heavy aircrafts landing on something as soft as grass and dirt, you can imagine the complications that arise. In fact, these issues would grow so significant over time that they even delayed the debut of the next generation of Marine One. While the lawn might look like something out of a Jane Austen novel, it doesn't offer the firm foundation that a helipad would. Just look at how the helicopter descends. Its weight causes the soft ground beneath the grass to compress, leading to an uneven or unstable landing. But here's where things get tricky. Landing a nearly 19,000-pound helicopter isn't just about touching down. It's a balancing act on a knife's edge. Let's take a closer look. To prevent disaster, 
three aluminum landing plates are placed on the south lawn before every landing. These plates distribute the helicopter's weight evenly and prevent the wheels from sinking into the grass. But here's the catch. It only takes one misstep for Marine One to wobble. And with such a small landing zone, even the best pilots need sniper-like precision. But even with a highly trained pilot, it's not only about where the helicopter lands. The challenges of landing on grass are increased when we consider all the forces in play during its landing. This is because adding another layer of problems is the rotor downwash from the helicopter's 1500 horsepower General Electric T58 GE-10 turboshaft engines. The rotor blades create a downwash, as you can see. This is when the rotors generate a forceful blast of air, pushing it downward as the helicopter hovers. With Marine One's rotors spinning at high speeds, the resulting downwash can reach 100 miles per hour. Now, imagine what that force does to the ground below. It stirs up the grass, loosens debris, and anything not firmly attached to the earth, completely desecrating the earth below. While the lawn bears the brunt of Marine One's landing, the force of the helicopter also affects the White House structure. Over time, downwash has been known to rattle windows, disturb roof shingles, and even shake the walls. Although the technical challenges of landing so close to the White House require constant maintenance, the South Lawn also presents a critical issue severely highlighted in an incident that occurred in 1974. It was a chilly February evening in 1974, and the White House stood as one of the most secure places on Earth. Or so everyone believed. Inside, the hustle of daily activities had come to a close, but Secret Service agents remained vigilant. Meanwhile, just 30 miles away at Fort Meade, Maryland, a lone figure sat in the cockpit of a U.S. Army Bell UH-1 Iroquois helicopter. Robert K. Preston had dreams of becoming a pilot, but after failing to pass flight school, his ambitions were crushed by rejection. But he was still stuck with the idea, what if, even just for a moment, he could feel the rush of being a pilot? In one reckless act of rebellion, he could prove that he was worthy of flying. Under the cover of darkness, Preston lifted the helicopter from Fort Meade, flying low and unnoticed through one of the most restricted airspaces in the world. His target? The South Lawn of the White House. As Preston touched down, the Secret Service scrambled, firing shots into the night. At that moment, America's most secure home was exposed. If one rejected pilot could pull this off, what other threats lurked in the sky? This bold breach sent shockwaves through the nation's security establishment and proved that the White House was vulnerable to aerial threats. Since then, defenses were ramped up, employing the White House Integrated Air Defense System. This system includes a network of sensors, radars, and anti-aircraft defenses designed to detect and neutralize any unauthorized aircraft long before they approach White House grounds. But defense doesn't stop with technology alone. Marine One, for instance, rarely flies alone. It's usually accompanied by two or three identical helicopters in formation, a maneuver known as the presidential shell game, and confuses any potential threats. Today, the South Lawn, which serves as a ceremonial site and landing pad, requires security measures that ensure the president's safety but its upkeep has caused significant delays and to the upgrade of the aircraft. Why has the new Marine One been delayed for years? And how is the South Lawn involved? The helicopter currently used as Marine One has been in service since the 1970s and is now over four decades old. With technology advancing at a rapid pace, the current fleet of Marine One helicopters is aging and increasingly difficult and expensive to maintain. Out with the old and in with the new, Sikorsky VH-92A Patriot. The new Marine One aircraft weighs close to 28,000 pounds and has been designed to accommodate more passengers, equipment, and security personnel. 
But the VH92A has been ready for a few years now. So why is it taking the White House this long to make the switch? Well, it turns out that the South Lawn itself has become one of the biggest obstacles. This lush green lawn, the very symbol of tradition, now stands in the way of progress. In a 2020 Government Accountability Office report, a test landing in 2018 with the new VH92A caused significant damage to the South Lawn due to the prolonged exposure of the hot exhaust. As if tradition and technology were finally at war, the test initially intended to prove that the new Marine One was ready for regular use at the White House highlighted the fact that the aircraft would only cause unfixable damage to the lawn. Despite these challenges, the new Marine One finally made its debut for President Biden in August 2024. Not on the South Lawn, as you would expect, but flew him from Chicago's O'Hare International Airport to Soldier Field, marking a milestone in its long-awaited introduction. But even with all its advancements, its future use on the South Lawn remains uncertain. Will Marine One stick to landing on grass? Or will the White House eventually adapt the lawn to the upgraded aircraft, perhaps with a permanent helipad? As you can see, the South Lawn is a public-facing space, which means preserving its value is crucial. A permanent helipad would stand out on a lawn that has symbolized the president's direct line to the public. Installing a helipad would crush that vision and replace the elegant storybook fantasy of it with cold practicality. In the end, the choice to land Marine One on grass might seem counterintuitive at first. After all, grass doesn't offer the stability or durability of a helipad. But as we've explored, though it is unusual for the most powerful person in America to land on grass, the tradition is rooted deeply in a mix of technical compromise and security strategy. The South Lawn has become an important part of presidential history, offering both practical space and a powerful image for the public. So next time you watch Marine One glide gracefully onto that soft green lawn, remember, it's not just grass. It's a strong link between past and present, tradition and progress. A seemingly simple act, but one wrapped in history and purpose. Bye for now.